I started talking to people about like individual consulting and they had asked me for it. And I figured, well, the only way for it to be scalable is to produce content around it and create a formalized program. So the plan transitioning out of Google at first was to manage other people's units and to be like a kind of digital manager where I just did like pricing and guest communication and the listing management and left the host to find the team moving around. There's a property manager out there called Evolve and they charge 10% instead of 30%. And that was their business model and they've grown very quickly. And I started to realize as, after I went through my due diligence of how hard it is to create a management company. Each state is a patchwork of real estate laws. You often need to be a brokerage and have a storefront to have your own property management company. Although a lot of people do it under the radar. It's not really how I wanted to start. So after listening to 50, 100 social metal investors and talking to them, tech employees, about if that was interesting to them, I started to realize that maybe that wasn't the push to these customers. They were asking for coaching. They were not asking for management. And they really wanted to run this themselves or they wanted their wives to run this while they worked at Google, their wife becomes a real estate professional for those tax benefits. So I realized that like this teaching was the path of least resistance and it was a higher margin business for me too. Like management has a lot of liability, a lot of overhead with staff you have to cost, you have to obviously pay. And like the geographical distribution of having lots of houses is really complex and annoying. So I pivoted into just education, which is what I have been doing the past year and decided to create a formal program and to take them through the arc that I described previously like the 20,000 foot view of what is the industry, what are the trajectory of the industry in different both markets and strategies of different property types. And then walking people through how do you finance it, how do you furnish it, how do you operate it and automate it, and then how do you run it like a super host. So I just produced long form, short form, and, and video content like this and just charge people an annual fee for my time, for the accelerated program, and for like the group mastermind aspect of it. I'd say like my particular angle coming from my background is like forecasting and data analysis is like the data and the analysis side of things. Like how do you choose a market? How do you underwrite your house? How do you predict revenue? And I think like I bring that like the really data driven backing. The hardest part of buying a short term rental is getting the confidence to buy it. And I think like the biggest thing I sell people is the confidence to not only buy it and run it. Where I hear from students like my first one, Mary, who's building a house in Idaho, broke up with her boyfriend and moved to Chicago. And now she wants to Airbnb it. It's like she wouldn't have had the confidence to hire her team to tell them what the hourly rate is and what the expectations are without someone that had done it before or got it through it. So I think not only like the data underwriting standpoint, but also like how am I gonna run this remotely? How, is, how do I automate this whole thing? I think getting the kind of confidence to say, I can do this. It's the biggest thing I give people. It's like, I've always told myself that people call me a hype man. I like to tell people, you can do this. And a lot of people just need to hear that, but like anything in their life, so it's, and it's not blind validation. It's like validation with all the data behind it. It's not just like a guess man behind you. It's like a, wow, that analysis was freaking sound. You could definitely make 20% of your money. Yeah, with Airbnbs, like, you can strive to be like whatever you want your unit to be. Like, for example, I have a house hack that is a basement. It can never be anything better than a basement. And it makes the 25th percentile of money in its market. I also have a mountain cabin that's a 50th percentile. And when I analyzed it, I was like, that's definitely 50th percentile. And now I have a custom ground up cabin and geodome that's the 99th percentile. So I've been able to see three different tiers in the short term rental world. And I think those are really the three different options if you're gonna go into it. Do an average to basic unit because that's all you can do and expect it to produce relatively low. Like competition is gonna be high, guest quality is gonna be relatively low. You could hit that middle tier unit. That's pretty easy to do for the average person. To like, it's not rocket science to acquire a house, furnish it, and list it on air. It's hard to do really well, but it, there's low barriers to entry. And with any business, like you're interested in, in what's your competitive advantage. If you're gonna spend this money, run this for 10 years, like what's gonna hold off the competition? And like just buying an average condo in Chicago, it's not gonna hold off the competition even if you furnish it with neon lights and like, like green backing and everything like that. It's gonna produce nice, but it's easy for sellers to copy you. So my strategy to, for the 99th percentile unit was to do the most unique, high quality Airbnb I could. Basically to size up the market, see that there's the possibility for making what I wanna make, but maybe not anyone making that tier yet. And come in and just upscale 
and just level up from what everyone's at and produce the most unique thing. Like I wanted to build a Geodome because I know that they can make some of the most money for their costs on Airbnb. So I just reverse engineered how to put a nice modern Geodome in a specific market. I found a contractor, I came with some ideas and some money and we found a financing partner. And then we worked out all the logistics. How is this gonna appraise? What's the price per square foot? What exactly are we gonna build? And then we just built it. And I designed something custom ground up for Airbnb only. I knew it would make sense as a long-term rental, as a bailout plan. There was enough demand for long-term rentals that I could make my two to 2.5K per month. But I was aiming to make upwards of eight to 10K per month on Airbnb. So I aimed to build a product that could get that amount of money. So I spent a year planning, finding a contractor, finding land, having the contractor help me choose the land, and executing and launching this Airbnb. And I priced it at 100 bucks per night more than anyone else in my market and sold and became the number one producing Airbnb in my market. And now I'm building more and doing more and helping others build all the cool unique properties. So that's the niche that I've carved out is to like intentionally go for the top 10% in a market and design it from the beginning or acquire it from the beginning to hit that level. You'll have more competitive advantages because it'll be harder to do what you're doing. It's not impossible to build a geodome, but for the average investor getting into short-term rentals, they're gonna go for an easier solution most of the time. So we talked about starting up the market in order to get that for and clearing out if there's space for you to do this. First for me is always gather data. And there's a bunch of different sources for short-term rental data out there. I think the best ones that I've used, AirDNA is a Denver company that scrapes Airbnb listings. They've been doing it for a while and have gathered a big database. And there's companies like this, All The Rooms is another one. There's companies that you put an address into and they'll give you the short-term rental annual estimate for revenue. AirDNA does that, data.rabu does that as well. Those are my two favorite ones. But it starts with identifying the market, maybe you live there, maybe you have expertise there, you wanna analyze it. Let's purchase a data set of that market's data. You can do it on Price Labs for 20 bucks for a zip code. You can pull all 5,000 Chicago units, their estimated revenue, average daily rate, occupancy, smart pricing, da 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 da. 20 bucks. You can acquire all the units around you. And using that data, you can estimate what your unit will be. So in Colorado, it was who are the 13 three bedrooms around me? And what did these data sites that you may have to pay 20 to 100 bucks to get that data? but that's worth it for the investment. What do they say that my competitors make per year? What are they like rent for per night? And what's their occupancy? What's their annual? Rate? And based off of that, I can build this model, which is like how much money am I gonna make and how much money am I gonna net based off of my financing and my expenses. So the first is acquire data, choose a strategy, dive deep into the data to make sure it makes sense to do, and then go execute it and launch it and automate it. The idea behind it was to produce like the most unique, highest producing Airbnb in the market. I backed into a geodome off of trying some designs for more complex, bigger accessory dwelling units, but ultimately I went for a, a cheaper, more blandy setup. But the idea first was to just make something unique out of the box that's different. It's not just a normal cat. If you add occupancy and beds to a property, you can list it for more money. And part of Airbnb's algorithm is saying, what is your price per bed? So one hack to get your cabin to make more money is to put additional beds on the property. And maybe it's not in a permanent structure, maybe it's in a temporary structure, with some heating and some AC, but it was my occupancy hack was to like build two structures in the same property where I had to put a lot of money into the nice big one and not that much money in the smaller one, but the unique factor of the added one makes the whole property rent for like the most in the market. So it was all trying to reverse engineer, what do I need to do to be number one property? And effectively building a geodome is difficult. Like most counties will not let you build a temporary structure in a residential zone lot. Like you have to do it to a commercial spot or you have to end up doing what I did. I wanted to build a residential area because it had water, sewer, electric. It was easy. I didn't have to drill a well and put in a septic tank. But because of that, they wanted you to build a permanent structure. They don't want a temporary structure. So I had to build a house to build a geodo, effectively. I reluctantly built this cool modern cabin so I could put a tent up. But, and the tent is really what draws the blend. It's what I marked first. But the geodome, people keep asking about it separately. But my strategy was to build a house in a geodome because that's how I could finance the geodome. Where the bank will say, if you're building a house, you can put an art studio next to it. And the county where we're permitting in allows our studio. My builder 
knew about. So we said, okay, fine. The Giro, the art studio, this is how big it's gonna be. We submitted the plans for the house, which included both. And then we got an instruction loan, which converted into a house loan afterwards, two in one product for the whole project. So the house was 400K, the Giro was 50K. I put 20% down on the whole project, which was like 90K as an entity, as an LLC, and then got a 30 year, 4.4% note for the whole thing. So first it was figuring out where it goes. And for me, I was living in Denver. It was a big national park nearby and I visited it and I knew there was not enough Airbnb. So I started to do those saturation calculations that you're talking about. What are my competitors' occupancy? Had been spiking during the pandemic. What is the ratio of number of nights booked to listings? That tells you how many nights everyone is selling on average. I looked at those and concluded it was not densely populated enough of it. I looked at similar places like Joshua Tree, which is really blown up for Hotel Rentals. It was a national park of 4 million and there was like five to 8,000 Airbnbs. And here there was 600,000 visitors and 250, 200 Airbnbs. So a slightly lower ratio overall. I realized there was room for growth, so I just executed and decided to jump into the deep end and build it. And I, my idea started and then it was finished up on Airbnb in 13 months. I broke ground four months after writing down a piece of paper, I wanna build a geodome, I wanna put it here. And then it was rentable nine months after that initial groundbreaking. So it wasn't that long to do it. And all I had to do was make a series of decisions along the way. What kind of countertops do you want? What color siding do you want? What's the flooring color? So you can outsource a lot of those decisions, but they're not frequent or enough of them where you can't build them into working for a tech company and just check them off. So I just slowly made all the decisions, went down there, managed some of the buildings, some of the furnishings, and then lost it and ran it remotely. How do you build and how to become the best? And the other one is like, how do you get to the highest spot on Airbnb's ranking algorithm? So even if you have the nicest, best furnished Airbnb, you still need to hit certain aspects of running it and optimizing it, otherwise it won't perform well. So there are some hacks out there to make your Airbnb show up higher on the Airbnb's search algorithm. And we're gonna go through a couple of those top ones today. The number one factor, and this stuff changed over time by the way, and this has been pulled from I think six months to a year ago, but a lot of these are still valid. The number one factor to be ranking high on Airbnb's algorithm is review score, is what's your rating out of five. And the best ways to act that higher, obviously you have to provide a quality experience and good customer service, but you also need to train your guests over how the numbers work. Airbnb is carrying the stick with their reviews where they try to get the host to only get fives. If you get enough fours, if you get below 4.3, you could be delisted and guests don't know that. So I like to inform them over how it works. When they check out, I say, thanks so much for staying. I'd love if you left a review. This is how the system works. A five is a pass and a four and below is a fail. This is important to supporting my guilt trip them a little bit, like my, our family and hospitality. And I get 90% of my reviews are five. And then I say, if you have any issues, please reach out to me. I, I'd love to make it right. So pretty much just like I will bribe you for a five. If you're that kind of person and you want to get bribed, like I sometimes do bribe customers. So that's number one. And again, within that realm is like how I'm waiting to bribe your customers, right? And early on, you need to defer to the questionable, oh, there was a hair on the pillowcase, not like the legitimate, like your fridge didn't work or your dishwasher didn't work. You have to get money back in both those situations. And then as you get more established, you can start to say, it was a questionable, very highly questionable refund request. I'm gonna say no to it. But as you're building up that super host 1.8, you have to bribe the cans with some cash. So that's number one. Number two is how updated and how good your listing is. So do you have high quality photos? Are you using all the characters in your description and your title? Like how frequently do you update your description and your photos so Airbnb knows you're fresh and that you're not like an old outdated listing? And there's a number of factors like going down the road, like is Instabook on? Do you have enough amenities listed? What is your price per bed? And how does that compare? Like price is actually, I think number two on the importance list because Airbnb wants to rank you higher if your price is lower. That's counter to as a host, you're trying to optimize revenue. So for me, that's not a score I'm trying to completely max out. I want my price to be high and I want to hit all the other factors so I rank. But you want to be competitive with your price and that gets you higher on your reviews out. Those are probably like the top most important things to do.